Reverend Larry Seekinen became the Disaster Response Coordinator for the Susquehanna Conference the last week of August. Two weeks into September, Pennsylvania saw major flooding that has not seen since the 72 flood. His position was very helpful in resourcing um, volunteers and equipment to go to those in need that were affected by the flooding. So was this position available and was the team in place um, before you became director a coordinator in um, the last week of August? The conference has always had a disaster response coordinator. Sometimes it's filled, sometimes it isn't. This time it's been open since June. Oh, wow. And Ken Mengel, who coordinates the position, asked me if I would take it in June. and. I had to think about it for a long time. I probably should have thought a few more weeks, but um, it's always been a position that's in the conference in case of disaster, but in disasters, it's much more active than when there aren't any disasters. And is this a full-time position or do you pastor a church as well? Uh, it's a full-time position, but I don't get paid for it. Okay. <laughs> it's a volunteer, volunteer position, okay. uh, but I pastor a small church in the Lewisburg district. Okay. Uh, was your church area affected by the flooding? The area around our church was affected, but our church was not. Okay. But you have seen several churches within the conference that were directly affected by the floods? Yes. There's a number of churches that were directly effect affected, some in their basements, a number of them even in their sanctuaries were flooded. Now, uh, do you prioritize the churches above the houses so that people can come and worship in that space, or how does that work? Actually, we don't prior we don't have the churches in the same priority list as the houses. Uh, we try to get the church to help the churches where we can, but a lot of times they have access to more volunteers through their own church and their community. and. So we help them out where there's a need, a lot of times with expertise, to help them know what to do, what to take out, what to, to clean, mm. um, as well as working with houses. But churches we don't prioritize. The ones that are more damaged, of course, we try to get to first. Is there a lot of training that you had to go through to know what you can keep and what you have to get rid of? There is training. Um, there are also websites that you can go to that help you know, but mine's come by experience from working in flood damaged homes before. Okay. And what drew you to this ministry and working with flood damaged homes? I've always been involved in missions. I was the volunteer mission coordinator for the conference for about seven years. And volunteers in mission and disaster response are along the same lines. Volunteers in mission goes out and helps people who were had their houses damaged or are in need because of different things, where uh, disaster response is more in response to a disaster. The difference is in VIM, I was much more hands-on. This one, I'm much more in a supervisory role. So it's, it's different in that way for me. And the disaster response doesn't just go towards flooding, right? No, disaster response, we respond to any man-made or natural disaster um, anywhere within our conference boundaries, whether it would be flooding, tornadoes, uh, snowstorms, ice storms, or man-made disasters such as a nuclear accident or chemical spills, anything. Uh, we try to prepare so that we have the appropriate response to be able to help out where the need is. And. What kind of resources are available to you and how does, how does the conference connect with Mission Central and Cleaning Buckets and UMCOR? Okay, we mm -hmm. are, disaster response falls directly under the UMCOR umbrella. Okay. Uh, I, am, as soon as a disaster happens, I contact the bishop, the district superintendents, we decide whether we're gonna mobilize it conference-wide or, or more, more locally, and then we start looking for help. We come first to Mission Central, 
to uh, in this instance for flood buckets and we start coordinating flood buckets going out and then we contact UMCOR and UMCOR is already they instantly give us a ten thousand dollar grant that we can use to purchase materials to respond to the flooding and then uh, we put out a, an appeal to the people of the conference for funding to help with flood recovery. UMCOR puts out an appeal to help with flooding recovery and uh, the money that comes into our conference flood recovery account stays here in the conference. Uh, money that's given to UMCOR then of course goes to UMCOR and then they spread it out as the need needs come up and we can apply, in fact we are in the process of right now of applying to UMCOR for more grants so that we can do more work. Um, and how have you seen the cleaning buckets and flood buckets been useful for the people that you are helping? Oh, they're extremely useful. If everything in your house has been destroyed and you need rubber gloves or gloves, you need soap, uh, bleach, any of that kind of stuff, it comes in the flood buckets and you can easily pick it up. It's sealed, so yeah, everything's in, in one place and then you have the bucket to use also. So the flood buckets are great in the very early stages for people to be able to use to start cleaning up their own homes. How have you felt that this position and helping with disaster response has helped you to grow as a Christian? It helps me to see uh, Jesus in action, mm -hmm. to see people who are touched. When you go to a home and it's obvious the person that you're working with in the home um, is not a churchgoer or active in their church and uh, you come to help them, the first question is why? Why are you here to help us? And so we get to explain that we do this because Jesus has called us to go into the world and help people. And we had one home that was really neat. When we left the first day, she said, you can't leave if we don't pray. And it wasn't something, she didn't want to pray because she didn't feel like she knew how to pray, but she wanted to pray and she wanted to give everybody in the group a hug. So that's where you really see it. It's seeing uh, our faith in action, and that's why I really like it. So it's not just church members that you're helping. So how do the other people, um, how do you learn about the other people? that can We work helped? with uh, FEMA, Pima, Federal Emergency Resp Disaster Response. We work with Pennsylvania Emergency Response. We work with the Red Cross. We work with local governments, anybody who will uh, send people to us who are in need. Our first thing that we do is get in contact with all of the local governments, state governments, federal governments, let them know we're here and, and willing to work. And then they start sending people our way who need help. And how long does the recovery take from a disaster? There, there's a, a rule of 10 once, and this is how long the disaster itself lasted. This one, the disaster lasted about 14 days and that's from the time when it started until you can say that it's officially the disaster is over. The, the water's gone down and people are able to remove it or to come back to their homes. You multiply that by 10. So if the disaster was 14 days, the recovery or the response stage, which is going in, mucking out houses, getting them clean, safe and sanitary, which is what we do in disaster response. Um, would take 140 days. Okay. And then the entire response to the flood, you'd multiply by 10, and that would give you a good estimate of how long it's going to take to recover from this disaster, and that's 1,400 days. So we're looking at a long, a long period of time. Yes, so volunteers are always still welcome, even though the disaster has happened and sometimes it, it's not on the top of people's mind. There's <laughs> always a need for volunteers until we're completely finished and people can volunteer. People now are starting to volunteer for the spring and summer and even into the fall of, of 2012 already as they start planning their year out. Well, if you and your church are interested in helping to volunteer with um, homes that have been affected by the flooding or other disasters, uh, you can check out my blog at sesquahannaexpress.blogspot.com.